flycatchers have babies. I just got out of the pool, and these are my tomato plants. But this little guy's still not doing very good. But look at over here. Yeah, Howie's got a whipper snip. Look at over here. Look at this one. I'm going to... Bless you! I'm going to clip this one off right here. Because we're supposed to get rain for the next few days. And I'm just going to take the little dead one out. And I'm going to stick this buddy in here just like this. Just like that. And I'm going to water it. Watch it take off. It's already bigger than the plant that's in there. Tomorrow, I'm going to fill that pot and put the other top in it. My beans are starting to find their canes. And it looks like almost all of these are the climbing beans that I harvested last year. Because those are the only climbing beans I have. Ha! Huh. I look at my parsnips much better than last year. I was weeding my squashes in the bed with the trellis, and I uh, decided to stop because I have more squashes coming up. So I'm just not going to disturb it too too much. I've given my Onions are rough weeding. You can still see weeds in there, but you got to be careful with onions because they're just as easy to pull up. So I did a little. I'm going to do these two corners, and then my onions are done. Look, there is the first sign that my deadheading is working. So pretty soon I'll be able to recognize like that. That I call weed psychology. It's trying to look like a marigold, but it's not. So pretty soon, when all these weeds have been pulled for the last time, I will be able to recognize what is a marigold baby and what is not. And this will soon be all surrounded. My cabbages should all be surrounded with marigolds in probably three weeks. And the paper, it seems to be doing its job in my celery beds because all I have to do is reach in around the edges and grab the most obvious weeds. And it's supposed to rain today, so I'm doing this now so as not to give them any more energy to grow. This makes it much easier than weeding the whole bed. That's for sure. And eventually this will break down and encourage wormies. Compost. They're doing beautiful, eh? I now have more watermelons coming up. Um, this one here is a transplant. That one there is a blacktail mountain. And that one there has to be a blacktail mountain as to where it's coming up in the garden. Awesome! My Swiss chard are coming up. Spinach are starting to. Gracie's cooling off in the dirt under the shade. Let's uh, transplant a tomato plant and then go. I'm going for a swim. Okay, so this is one of those Canadian tire plants. Again, I, you saw me cut off the one top and I transplanted it over there and it needs watering again. This one... I'm going to take right oops, down, can you see, to here, and snip it. And here's my pot, and I'm just going to do this, right like that. Mound it right down to the first leaf, and I will keep watering this daily. And it will come back. You want to give that lots of water. Now look at this. When I was planting my baby tomato plants over here, I accidentally planted. I accidentally planted two. 
well, we'll just let them go. Okay, here's what I'm doing today. Now, as you can see, this is a quilt, but it's not your everyday quilt. This quilt is one of my son's quilt. Uh, I made this for him when he was, I don't know, 10. And it's gone worn to pieces. And he asked if I could recover it. He didn't care if it was fancy or not. Now, I was given an entire bag of squares from t-shirt material. And these, now I don't, if you're a beginner, I don't necessarily recommend using t-shirt material because it's stretchy and you really got to know, you know, but I'm tying it, so it's not that big of a deal. And also notice, because it is stretchy material, I am tying it at the corner joints. Why? Because they're going to see the most stress. And of course, the back is a flannel sheet. So we're going to roll this up. And I'm going to show you how I use the, the Grace Quilting Frame to finish this. I started this on the kitchen table. And then my hands got to, it got too hard for me to go through all the layers with a darning needle. I'm hoping this frame will help me do that. And all I have done is taken safety pins because it's not something you pull tight. It's a, it's a, it's not something you pull tight on the frame. It's just something we're going to roll up. So I'm actually pinning all the way through to the fabric on the rail with safety pins making sure at each side I get through all the layers. As you can see here, this shows you a better idea of how tattered Briar's quilt was. Fold this up. Let's just see here. We're gonna do that. I'm gonna pin this up like a skirt all along so that when I get, you just watch. to the trailing cloth, the leader cloth. You see what I've done here? I've pinned this to hold it in place, and then I pin the bottom to the leader cloth. I'm going to start my sewing along here. Now, a lot of y'all, yeah, don't look at my hair. A lot of y'all been asking how I make my butter stretch. I'm going to show you how. Here is two pounds of butter cubed up. I'm, uh, I'm going to do it piecemeal. This is a Ninja Blender and it has S blades in it. If you do not have a Ninja Blender, bring your butter to soft room temperature. And I mean soft, not melted, but close. Put it in a stand mixer with the whisk attachment and whip the bejeebers out of it while trickling in your sunflower oil. You can use any oil, like uh, you can use light olive oil or avocado oil. Sunflower oil just happens to be the cheapest. Okay, have two pounds or four cups of room temperature butter and four cups of sunflower oil. Now here are my butter wrappers from these two pounds of butter. 
and I'm going to show you what I do because y'all, you, you guys just are brilliant about saving this. Look at the amount of butter that is actually on this paper. So I just fold it in half, take the knife that I cut the butter up with. Whoops, that didn't look, that didn't happen very well. And I just cut them in four. And I put them in this tender flake lard box. I keep this in my fridge. All right. First, we have the one pound of butter, but I don't want to try and get all the rest of the cubes in without getting this down some. So I'm going to pour in half of this oil. I'm going to start pulling that. There. That's better. Now we can get the rest of these cubes of butter down in here. My room temperature butter isn't very soft because we've, we're having a cold snap right now. Now I'm just going to put this on whip. I'm going to stop because I forgot to add the rest of the oil. Equal amounts oil and butter. There is two cups in a pound of butter, therefore you would use two cups of oil. Present one. And I am going to take this whipper blade out of here and I'm just going to rest this on the lid to let that drip because it is liquid. Now, look at this. I'm going to top up the one I just did. These will go into the freezer. Oh, I think I'm going to need another thing here. Now this oil that I use, um, this cold press sunflower oil, is not cheap. About three seventy, no, four seventy five. So what I'm doing is, I'm taking two five pound, five dollar pounds of butter, adding 475, and then I get four pounds for about 375. Make sure you get all of this stuff, guys. Four pounds of spreadable butter minus this. Okay, so what I've done is I threw the heel of the bread in here and look how it cleaned the, the butter off of here. Now I'm just going to take these buttered bread crumbs. They're all nice and buttered. Now look how much cleaner that is. And I now have some buttered bread crumbs to put in the freezer for the next time I want to top a casserole. Here is tonight's supper from when Howie gets home from the races. I made this with that, a little package of hamburger, a can of mushrooms and an onion, a jar of my garden medley vegetables, and a can of pasta sauce. This will do us two meals. Now, many of you remember my driveway ending right about here. And last year, well, actually there. And when we expanded the property, those trees used to be on my neighbor's property. Well, now we're starting to fill in the ravine beside the garden. This was put in with Phil. And then Jimmy came yesterday. And if that's, here's my... Here's my uh, zucchini plants. That was where the dirt hill was. You can see the very edge of it right there. And he plowed her all down. One more year of fill and dirt and my garden gets expanded. This is the Miss Wolfie from our half acre homestead. And that's what I did this weekend. You know, puttered about making things stretch. <coughs> Take care, God bless. <laughs>